For years, people have speculated there is a third secret of Fatima that has never been revealed by the church. Finally, new light has come from an unexpected place in an almost off-the-cuff manner. Skeptics say the third secret released by the Vatican in 2000 is not complete, that something is being hidden from the public. They think it might be warnings against changes introduced by Vatican II or of struggles in the church. When the third secret was released, Mother Angelica of EWTN famously said she didn't think we got the whole thing. She said, I think it's scary, and that wasn't scary. Now, revealed for the first time, the true third secret of Fatima. It is absolutely terrifying. So terrifying, Sister Lucia, commanded by her bishop to write it in case something should happen to her, spent days agonizing over it. But she could not bring herself to do it. In the end, after a prompt from heaven, she did, of course, write it down. Exorcist Gabriele Amorth said St. Padre Pio told him he knew the third secret of Fatima, and it tormented him. Father Malachi Martin, asked to help draft a response to the secret for Pope John XXIII, read the third secret of Fatima. Martin said if released, people would fill the confessionals and kneel and strike their breasts. The new information about Fatima comes from Akita, Japan. What does the apparition at Fatima have to do with Akita, Japan? In 1973, Our Lady appeared in Akita to Sister Sasagawa and gave her a message for mankind. The third message of Akita was given on October 13, 1973, the anniversary day of the miracle of the sun at Fatima. And like with Fatima, it has been discovered recently that a part of this message from Akita was never released. Cardinal Ratzinger, the future Pope Benedict XVI, served as the head of the congregation for the doctrine of the faith at the time. In that role, he studied both the secret of Fatima and the message from Akita, and at one point he pronounced, The two messages of Fatima and Akita are essentially the same. Bishop Ito of Akita also said the two messages are the same. Everyone thought this was strange because the official text of the third secret of Fatima released in 2000 has nothing in common with the strikingly apocalyptic message given by Our Lady at Akita. So what was Cardinal Ratzinger talking about? Fast forward to the present. At the end of 2023, on the Mother and Refuge of the End Times YouTube channel, a video was posted featuring Father Elias Mary, an expert on Akita, link below. Father Elias read a passage from Father Yasuda's book, written only in Japanese. Father Yasuda served as the spiritual director for Sister Sasagawa, who received the message from Blessed Mary. He was considered a very holy priest, having the odor of sanctity. In Father Yasuda's book, we find this hidden key part of the message from Our Lady, given at Akita. Like the first Judas, the last pope will sell Jesus to the enemy. Therefore, the era of the Antichrist's pope will soon come. So, I think that, I don't know if Sister has anything more to add. It may be that she was the vessel who gave the message, but this is interesting because they stumbled across this book by Father Yasuda. And he, uh, it's, a, it's a book about 386 pages. And uh, they opened it up, the, the Japanese interpreter, because Dave never read the book because it's in Japanese. The interpreter was not Catholic, so he never was really turned to the book to look at it. So they just recently, in this last visit, they decided to go and look up this book. And they just opened it up, and he put his finger, and he found the exact spot where <clears throat> Father Yasuda talks about the sign left by her son. And Father Yasuda has this to say. The book is called Sibo Maria Zono Namida. It's a... Uh, Holy Mother's Statue and Its Tears, an anthology of tape-recorded preachings or talks given by Father Yasuda. And the book was published in 2003 in Japanese. It's never been translated into English. Father Yasuda lived to be 97 years old. He died in November of 2013, some said in the odor of sanctity. So he was a very important figure. He was the one, as I said, Bishop Ito said was like the official explainer of the message of Akita. If sister had any confusion or didn't know what certain things meant, he was the one who was supposed to enlighten her. And I think 
not only did the bishop, but I think also sister was told by Our Lady to go to her superiors, and he was her superior in that regard. So he says here, the first pope and the last pope, but I think what it, that's interesting because one translation says Judas. I think that's probably more correct. It says Judas and the last pope are to sell Jesus to the enemy. Therefore, the era of Antichrist Pope will soon come. The Akita and Fatima messages are the same, meaning the Fatima message also tells us the last pope will be the Antichrist's pope, likely meaning under his influence. Silenced in 1917, Our Lady repeated her message in 1973. Finally, the third message of Akita, which is the same as the third secret of Fatima, can be revealed in its entirety. Adding the hidden sentences where they fit best for the first time, we have what is most likely the complete message as given by Our Lady at Akita and Fatima. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day, recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops, and priests. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops against bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confreres. Churches and altars sacked, the church will be full of those who accept compromises, and the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. Like the first Judas, the last pope will sell my son to the enemy. The era of the Antichrist pope will soon come. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. Terrifying. Shocking. The Pope under control of the Antichrist has been said throughout the ages by enemies of the Church. What is shocking is that Blessed Mary said it, so we know it to be true as she speaks truth. Let us examine it closer. Many times God's revelations are unveiled generally, but then more specifically as the event approaches. I will put enmity between the woman and you, the serpent. We now know that woman is Blessed Mary of Nazareth, for example. St. Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist will seat himself in the temple of God. Let no one deceive you in any way. For unless the falling away comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one doomed to perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God and object of worship so as to seat himself in the temple of God. In his commentary on this verse, St. Augustine wrote in City of God, Book 20, It is uncertain in what temple the Antichrist shall sit, whether in that ruin of the temple which was built by Solomon or in the church. There is no Vatican, no Church of Rome, of course, at the time of St. Paul. He spoke generally. Fast forward to 1846. Our Lady appeared in La Salette, France, and reportedly said, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. This is more specific now mentioning Rome, the headquarters of the church. One could say Our Lady's use of the words seat of the Antichrist points to the chair of St. Peter and echoes in a more specific manner what St. Paul said about the Antichrist sitting in the temple of God. Move forward again to 1917 at Fatima, Blessed Mary said, like the first Judas, the last pope will sell my son to the enemy. The era of the Antichrist's pope will soon come. Accordingly, a pope, the one who sits on the chair of Peter, will be the Antichrist's pope that is, under the influence of the Antichrist. A very specific warning since that time is near, and this message is repeated at Akita, Japan, 56 years to the day after the miracle of the sun at Fatima. One might object, but this is the only explanation that makes sense of all we know about the third secret of Fatima. That explains all the hints and innuendos said over the last 100 years about the third secret of Fatima. It explains why Cardinal Chiappi, Theological advisor to five popes euphemistically said the unreleased part of the Fatima secret predicted the great apostasy in the church will begin at the top. It explains why Cardinal Ottaviani stated to a reporter, the third secret had been relegated to the bottom of the Vatican archives, and that's where it deserves to stay. It explains why Sister Lucia easily wrote of demons she saw in hell, 
but could not write the third secret and why she confessed to being traumatized by it. It explains why Padre Pio was tormented by the third secret, but not by any future catastrophic events. It explains why Father Malachi Martin said believers would fall to their knees in shock, striking their breasts. It explains why Pope John XXIII nearly fainted when it was read to him. And it might explain why Archbishop Fulton Sheen said the mystical body of Antichrist will be set up in counterpoint to the mystical body of Christ on earth today. With its Judas Iscariot recruited by Satan from our bishops as its leader, his mention of Judas Iscariot is so close to the words of Our Lady at Fatima and Akita to make one wonder if he too had read or been told the actual secret. Exorcist Gabriele Amorth said Padre Pio was tormented by only one thing. Padre Pio said to Gabriele, You know Gabriele, it is Satan who has been introduced into the bosom of the church and within a very short time will come to rule the ape of the church. When told this by Amorth, author Jose Zavala exclaimed, Oh my gosh, some sort of antichrist? On the Art Bell show, Father Malachi Martin was asked by a listener to comment on his Jesuit priest friend telling him the last pope would be under the control of Satan. Martin's reply, Yes, it sounds as if they were reading or being told the text of the third secret. One more question. I'm Art Bell. This is Coast to Coast AM. Father Malachi Martin, the exorcist, is here. And we'll be right back. All right, here we go. Um, just a couple of things I want to quickly read. One from a friend in Australia, Father. Yes. Uh, who says, I had a Jesuit priest tell me more of the third secret of Fatima years ago in Perth. Uh, he said, among other things, the last pope would be under control of Satan. Pope John fainted, thinking it might be him. We were interrupted before I could hear the rest. Um, any comment on that? Yes. Uh, it sounds as if they were reading or um, being told the, the text of the third secret. Oh my. It sounds like it, but it's sufficiently vague to make one hesitate. Yes. It sounds like it. Malachi Martin also said the secret means intense suffering for believers. The Catechism of the Catholic Church speaks of such suffering. Before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The supreme religious deception is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism by which man glorifies himself in place of God and of his Messiah come in the flesh. What we know of the Antichrist, frankly, is not a lot. Many fathers of the church, saints, and other great men and women of the church throughout the centuries wrote about the Antichrist. If one searches for Antichrist and reads what these great men and women of the church have written about it, one will notice the great disparity among them. What this means is none of them really know. They wrote what they believed would be true of the Antichrist. But these are mostly man's ideas, not revelation from God. So we need to be careful. What we know of the Antichrist from God is very little. There's a little a Antichrist mentioned in sacred scriptures, those who deny God in the flesh, Father and Son. Most of what we know of the Antichrist comes from St. Paul in 2 Thessalonians. And from Revelation, although that book is replete with symbolism, so one must be very careful in its interpretation. St. Paul is clear, although he doesn't say much. The Catechism is also a source, and we already looked at the main passage about Antichrist there. Interestingly, Pope Benedict said the Antichrist does not have to be recognized as evil. He can appear acceptable, benevolent, who, however, goes against God. He also believed the Antichrist would reinterpret the words of sacred scripture in a such a way as to sow confusion. And then, of course, there is Our Lady both at La Salette and at Fatima, with Fatima's message being repeated at Akita. From St. Paul, the Antichrist, the lawless one, will come after the restrainer is removed from the scene. The lawless one represents the climax of human self-assertiveness against God in the temple of God itself. Why does God allow this? St. Paul says God is sending them a deceiving power, so that they may believe the lie that all those who have not believed the truth but have approved wrongdoing may be condemned. On the objection that a pope cannot be under the control of the Antichrist, Jesus said the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against his church. St. Athanasius, when told the bishops were against him, answered, That proves that they are all against the church. He also said, Catholics who remain faithful to tradition, even if they are reduced to but a handful, they are the true Church of Jesus Christ. Interestingly, 
Jesus gave the keys to Peter, making him the first pope. But a few verses later, Peter contradicts Jesus, and Jesus shockingly says to him, Get behind me, Satan. So a pope can become an obstacle to Jesus, he can speak like the dragon. This brings us back to Pope Benedict XVI. Benedict was not a fool. Humble, gentle, learned, scholarly, that was Pope Benedict. A man of superior intellect. A master theologian. A man who knew the actual secret of Fatima. But he knew more. He knew of the reports of evil amongst the clerics, both outside and especially inside the Vatican. He knew the warnings of his predecessors of the intent of God's enemies to infiltrate the church. He discovered some of his key aides were acting to keep important information from him. He received the red report on the corruption in the Vatican, and he knew the prophecy of the popes from Garabandal, namely that after John XXIII there would be four more popes, and he was that fourth pope. And then it would be the end of the times, according to Our Lady at Garabandal in the 1960s. But what does end of the times mean? One idea is it means the end of the church age, the end of the church's influence on the Western world. Benedict did speak of a future smaller church. All this, along with his scholarship, his knowledge of theology, and his privileged position in the church hierarchy over the decades which provided access to the full secret of Fatima, as well as a vast body of information from other Marian apparitions. He most likely came to believe the papacy and the church were in danger, that a pope in the near future would be under the influence of Antichrist, as revealed by Our Lady of Fatima, Benedict reacted. He worked to synthesize Vatican II with pre-Vatican II. He eased restrictions on the Latin Mass, but facing growing resistance within the Vatican and growing frail. With failing health, Pope Benedict decided on a bold course of action, knowing all that was written in Scripture must occur and what Our Lady had said must occur. He resigned the papacy, likely hoping he could expose the Church's secretive enemies ranking inside the Vatican while at the same time preserving some papal authority in an effort to protect the church as much as he could. Tellingly, that night lightning struck St. Peter's. Lucifer fell in an instant like lightning from heaven. So for the first time in the history of the church, we had two bishops in white, a pope and an honorary pope living in the Vatican. By keeping his ties to the papacy, he retained some authority, specifically regarding any teachings of heresy. If the next pope clearly taught against church doctrine, Benedict could speak out hoping to delay corruption of doctrine. Because of Benedict's acumen as a theologian and his title of Pope Emeritus, he could hope they would listen. Thus, he could possibly place a check on the Antichrist's influence on a future pope and possibly expose the Antichrist. Of course, Benedict knew his time was short, but in his final years, free of most papal duties, he could use his remaining strength to foil plots of enemies of the church deep inside the Vatican, thus saving the church. In 2010 at Fatima, Benedict prayed for Our Lady's triumph to come during the next seven years before the 100th anniversary of Fatima in 2017. He knew the triumph is near by serving as a check on the lawless one. He could hope to delay the full onset of the destruction of doctrinal truth in Christ's church, mitigating the suffering until Our Lady's triumph. Thus, he would serve as the restrainer. From his deep faith, Benedict knew God placed him precisely at this moment in time. He alone had a vast knowledge of both Scripture and the dawning of the era of Antichrist. He alone was perfectly positioned to delay the full onslaught of the Antichrist's destruction of the Church of Jesus. And so, for the first time, and probably the last time, the world saw two popes in white in the Vatican. One intent on serving Christ the same way until the end. One intent on starting a process of introducing novelties into Christ's Church, under the influence of the world. It is true that Benedict never revealed the secret of Fatima or any of this for that matter. We know he knew the real secret of Fatima about the last pope, the Antichrist's pope. We also know Benedict spoke in an exacting, efficient manner. It seems he believed the Antichrist was already present in the Vatican, spreading his influence. Because we now know from the American conservative, in 2015 he wrote his friend a telling message. We see how the power of the Antichrist is expanding and we can only pray that the Lord will give us strong shepherds who will defend his church in this hour of need from the power of evil. He carefully chose the words, this hour, knowing their significance to mean now, because theologically speaking, this hour means this moment in time. So one could argue he believed we are living in the time of the Antichrist. So finally the Fatima mystery is complete. We are living it out now at this hour. As Mother Angelica suspected, it is scary. 
Sister Lucia said the Fatima message is in the Book of Revelation and the Gospels. Eschatology is the theological study concerned with the final events in the history of mankind. Our Lady used the words Last Pope and Antichrist's Pope. Theologically, the Last Pope and the Antichrist come at the end of all things. As the Catechism reminds, the final trial of the Church is the supreme religious deception of the Antichrist. This final trial will separate the wheat from the chaff, those who stay true to Church doctrine, and those who follow the deception of the Antichrist, who puts himself above the deposit of the faith given by God. So one can see how the Fatima prophecy tells us we are at the end of all things. For any who wondered what it would be like to live during the Roman persecutions, or the time of the Arian heresy, we get to live through something worse. Father Elias Mary said Father Yasuda wrote about this time. No matter how much we worry, we cannot prevent this. There is nothing we can do about it. We must properly defend our faith. But the growth in the power of the mystery of iniquity brings us that much closer to the glorious triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Blessed Mary promises us that in the end, her Immaculate Heart will triumph. She's assured us as Our Lady of the Good Event that when everything seems completely lost, it will be her hour, the time when she will act in a glorious way to restore all things. And Jesus promises he will return to slay the Antichrist. We must pray, pray, pray. Our only means of help at this hour are the Holy Rosary and the sign left by my Son, which is the Holy Eucharist at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Holy Eucharist reception, of course, also means confession. We need to confess, receive Holy Communion often, and recite the Rosary daily. When these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads because your redemption is at hand. Be not afraid. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Behold, I am coming soon. God bless you.